I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us, and I hope you enjoy these programs. I, I certainly am thrilled to, to hear the stories of these individuals, and today we have Kenzie Bitter here. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you coming and sharing Thank your you. story. Are you a Utah person? Yep, were you born, born and raised, raised here? Where yep. were you at? Where were you? Born in Salt Lake, but raised in Layton. Okay. Went to school up there and everything, mm -hmm. huh? Northridge High. Lots of brothers and sisters, or? Three that... brothers, one sister. Oh, good for you. Okay. Yeah. And all active? Were your parents active in the church? And uh, Grown up, my... Mm, that's a hard question. Oh. The siblings, no, except for the sister was. Okay. She's 10 years older than me. Okay. And so she got married in the temple when I believe I was 12, yeah. 11 or 12. And then my mom was really active and then my dad kind of here or there but okay. mostly he was okay and so you went to the primary and did all the yep. young young women things yeah, and stuff yeah. did you take seminary i did all six years yeah graduated from seminary oh did you yeah. four, four years six years four years six four. Oh, four because it's, it's four. ninth grade huh <laughs> yeah just kidding <laughs> so uh, how, how was that any anything ever come up that that way and... the biggest question i had um I can't remember if it was 10th or 11th grade, they were talking about how to receive questions people would ask you, um, and one of them was polygamy, how how do you justify polygamy, and, and I just never really questioned anything, I yeah. blindly believed everything. Sure, and, we all did. <laughs> but there was a, one of the lessons they gave, there was a comment that was said that you in heaven there's going to be more righteous women than there are men oh. and so that's where polygamy is going to come back into play is that's when why you the go, men have so much women mm -hmm. yeah. now did you believe and, that and i about lost it <laughs> i had quite a long conversation with my seminary teacher at the time and and at the end of it it felt like he was just kind of trying to brush me off and he just said well it's, you just don't need to know it's just not something you need to know right now god has a plan or yeah something and... yeah god has god has a plan for you and it just doesn't you don't need to know right now mm. that's kind of an easy kind of a cop out wasn't yeah it? <laughs> for sure it was always i always felt like whenever i had a question like that that yeah. was the answer people gave you did you know that Joseph Smith practiced polygamy at that age? I mean, when you were in seminary, did you ever hear that? Yes, but I, I knew he had more than one wife, but I never knew that they were ever under the age of 20 <laughs> or, or any younger 14. than him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let alone 14. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, I guess I had ra been raised or ta taught that he, well, that women just kind of sealed themselves to him after he died. Because I didn't know that. Just so that they could be part of his family. Oh, But okay. I didn't know for so long that he actually had... Um, oh, when he was alive. When he was alive, that he had these women that were married. And then found out that he had married women that were already married. 
<gasps> not alone the 14 year olds, but he. I remember, didn't know that. You didn't know that? Uh uh. There's 11 of them that oh, they've was identified. It, was it the women's husbands that were off on the war? Is <laughs> the that? missions. Missions. Well, he would oh, send them off mission? on missions and then <gasps> marry And then marry. <laughs> wow. Very tricky. Well, it was all inspired, of course. But Of course. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was. Uh, polygamy's been kind of a funny thing, so. Oh, there's a lot I didn't yeah. know. I thought yeah. I knew everything. <laughs> well, I learned something. <laughs> so, so you get a little older and and you get married. Yeah, I graduate high school and then I get my um, hair license and kind of in the middle of all of that, I met um, my ex-husband. <laughs> Who is now an ex-husband? Who is now my ex-husband? But you got married in the time. temple. I did. Was I was that always 19. a goal? Yes, it was that. <laughs> I met a lot of men along the way and. Some of them didn't want to get married in the temple, so we kicked him to the curb, and, really? and that was a, there was no doing anything other than getting married in the temple, because okay. that's what you were taught. Would, and I know, I know you mentioned he's an ex-husband, so was that kind of a, was that upsetting to you, the family, the, the fact that things didn't work out, even with a temple marriage? Um, it's a loaded question. Oh, so sorry. when I... <laughs> When I met him, I was convinced we were going to be together forever. Sure. And I, I don't know how you know that when you've only known him a couple of months. I yeah. think I, I knew him about a month and a half, and we got engaged. Now, was he a return missionary? Mm -hmm. Oh, he was. Yes, he was. So you fulfilled all the requirements. I did. That you had along <laughs> as your youth that you'd get married in the temple to a return missionary. Mm -hmm. And I went into the hair industry so that I could save us money. Yeah. So I could cut my husband's hair and my children's hair, oh. be a stay-at-home mom. I was going to get married in the temple, have babies, and just stay at and, home. And be a, a good, active woman all your <laughs> life. And yeah. things just didn't work out, and I don't know how appropriate to talk about that kind of, those other details. But suffice it to say, things yeah. just didn't work out. And no, I, it was, when I went, when I went through the temple, the only reason why I was going through the temple was because I was going to get married. Um, mm -hmm. Some some of the women they go on a mission, and I wasn't. I never felt like I wanted to go on a mission. Okay. And that was then that that was kind of my no. <laughs> this is what my whole life has been about. I don't. I don't understand why. Like all the teachings in the church, the temple didn't have anything to do with any of those teachings. Except that, that for eternal in, families. That is interesting, isn't it? It was really scary. Yeah. What else? What did so explain that a little bit? Just well, I had been told by one of the um, workers when I went to go get garments that to leave them in the bags that I wasn't going to be putting them on yet. Right. And then I heard that you are naked in the temple, yeah. and so I kind of panicked and asked my mom and my um, soon to be husband and they were like yes you're you're gonna be naked and I was like oh, hold on a second that was a lot of anxiety and when we got there you go into this special little room and you put on this special little robe and they they bless you yeah. and they give you um, all this interesting information that made no sense to me like you get a different name and you you get told of all these promises God has for you of what your life's going to be like yeah. here on earth. Yeah. And that just wigged me out. <laughs> I did not like it. And then the worst part was when you go into that room where the men and the women are in there and it's not just you. Yeah. Um, I don't know what they call that room. Well, the first room that you go to with the men, yeah. that's just the, the garden room or something. Usually it's the okay. garden room or... Well, learning all the secret the ha the bit the the downfall i guess for me was that you had to know i couldn't wrap my head around you had to know a certain handshake and a certain saying to get into heaven that god wasn't going to let you into heaven without knowing that and then the second thing was so what if my husband dies after me where where am i going to go because my husband has to pull me through the veil <laughs> 
when I'm just going to sit there and like <laughs> wait for him? I'm sorry. I wasn't raised that way. <laughs> no. Those are interesting practical questions, but it kind of goes back to what the seminary teacher said. Yeah. Just don't worry about it. That's what I was told too yeah, by my mom and by a lot of my friends it'll that get have been out through. In the end, yeah, or? you don't, you actually don't need to know any of that. Mm -hmm. If you, the biggest question or the biggest answer I got was if you go enough. If you keep going, if you endure to you'll, the end, and it, stuff, yep, yeah. you'll find out all your answers. That didn't really work out. <laughs> it's an interesting perspective, and 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 that just bothered you that uh, it rubbed me the wrong way, really bad. Did you go back much to the uh, temple? Every single week, me and my, oh my ex-husband goodness. at the time, we would go to a different temple in Utah. Oh, I, I think I've been to all of them. Really? Yeah. Well, I haven't even I haven't even done that. So and, that. well, I was convinced. Now, was this maybe, after 1990? I'm sorry. Yes, yes. I was, we so didn't get did. married until 2010. Oh, okay, sure. So I was convinced maybe it was that temple I was going to. So maybe if I go to a different temple, oh, oh my gosh, it's exactly the same. Yeah. It's the same video. It's the same um, sayings. It's everything was the same, and I was done. Yeah. I was freaked out. And my husband, my husband at the time, tried to get me to just. Oh, it's okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And I just couldn't let it go. Hmm. And then we got divorced, and it just kind of went downhill yeah. after that. I didn't. I never actually went back to church after we got divorced. Oh, you didn't. Mm -mm. Oh, I thought you were active with the uh, with the young women or anything. You didn't go to um, camps or anything before, before you when before I got married. I went to a lot oh. of girls' camps and I would help out at the singles wards and all that, but as soon as my ex-husband went back to where he lived, I didn't. No. Did you did you sense at that time that the church wasn't true, or you were just kind of yes. having, were you? No, I was done. I was like, really? oh my gosh, I can't believe this is what I believed in. And I was kind Even of... Even at this young age? A, I, th wow. I feel like I was more atheist after oh. that. I was like, there's no God. Well, I that, can't, I can't wrap my head around that. What did you think about Jesus as a Mormon, as LDS? That he was my brother yeah. and that he like lived a full life. He came to earth, he got married, he had babies and then oh, he died and went to heaven. Okay. And yeah, I know. And he had to come here. Yeah, he had to. get to. a body and yeah. get baptized. Yeah, and just that, like so. all of us. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. No. And, that's, and that's crazy, isn't it? Or strange. To, to Very think odd. That. Did you understand grace at all? Did you? Mm -mm. I mean, as a Mormon, you were assume. I assume you were thinking you were going to have to do do a whole like, bunch of stuff. Go pay your tithing yep. and go to church and yeah. go to the temple and all that stuff. Yep. Kind of works-based religion, yep. huh? Exactly, and yeah. I think that's what was. I I talked to a lot of people that knew me as a Mormon and know me now as a Christian and say that I'm much more relaxed. Well, yeah, there, I mean, there's less pride. I, I know I'm not, I hope I'm not putting words in your mouth, but for me, there's less pride. Oh, yeah. There's less judging. Yeah. You're more accepting of everybody, and you're yeah, not trying to... Yeah, it's not my place to, to judge, whereas yeah. that's all you did, all I did as yeah. a Mormon was judge people. Well, you mentioned going, feeling a sense of atheism, mm -hmm. and, and the reason I pro was prompted then to ask you about Jesus is, I think a lot of Mormons don't have that foundation with Jesus. Oh no! They, it's all about their family and what they're doing. Yeah. It's not about so much what Jesus did. Not so really. when they leave Mormonism, they don't really have any anchor or foundation. Mm -mm. Did you feel that way? Oh yeah, there wasn't any kind of a. It didn't help that I lived on my own and didn't really have any kind of an influence. I saw my dad. Um, maybe a couple times a month, and he was kind of the one that was like. No, there's a God. I'm like, oh. Kind of helping you, encourage oh, no. you. That way. And then I went down to Mantine Pageant, and there was a lot of Christians that were witnessing there. And there was a select little group that had come all the way from Arkansas to witness in Utah. And I thought that was During the Manti bizarre. Pageant, yeah. yeah. Like, why would you do that? And it was, it's, that's kind of where, like, the little seed started. And then I went to Sean McCraney's, um, church services or whatever you and call what Bible he does. Yeah, Bible study at the University study. of Utah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's where we met probably. I think yeah. so, yeah. So yeah. we met my dad and um, we kind of just, I would. 
Have you ever done that verse by verse kind of study no. before? No. No, heavens no. I still kind of have a hard time because with, with verse by verse. <laughs> yes, because I feel like, oh, am I brainwashed again? Like oh. I still have moments where I'm, oh, that's too close to the Mormon religion. I don't. But then I have to like. It's okay. They didn't create it. Like they stole it from Christianity. Yeah. That's why it's so close to the same. Yeah. Well, did you have a? Did you read the Bible at all as a as a Latter Day Saint? Um, I mean, I would read it, but then I wouldn't trust it, and I would go, refer to the Book of Mormon. Sure. And I didn't really believe anything. Yeah. Unless I read the Book of Mormon, okay. which <laughs> it's just sickening to think about. <laughs> Well, did you, during this atheistic period, did that last very long then? No, it was oh. just like maybe six months or so. But you just didn't have that foundation or that sense of no. if there was a God or not for a mm. little bit. Yeah. So you feel scary. better that you found him now? <laughs> Heavens, yes. <laughs> yeah. And I praise God that I know him and that I can teach my babies him. Yeah. So they never have to go through yeah. not knowing him. Yeah, so now do you, uh, the Bible, does it, how do you read them? I yes, mean, I have two Bible <laughs> study groups I go to a week. Really? Yeah, and then me and my husband um, do our own thing at home, and, and I kind of do my own thing. No, I know For you sure. were young, and you, but you did go to seminary. Do you see a lot of things in the Bible that you didn't know before? From Yeah, like I would read the Bible and think that that wasn't, real like it was kind of made up and now and it was just completely backwards no the book of mormon's completely made up and so when i read stories or hear sermons from my pastors it, i just really so that was real like yeah. that not yeah. that wasn't made up <laughs> well and there's archaeology and other things exactly. that support the bible and yeah you know, yeah so what happened the first time you went to a christian church um, I was really weirded out because I went to a Baptist church and they're like, you know, putting their hands in the air, singing, and I quite like Mormons. Oh, <laughs> why do they have? Why someone answer their questions? <laughs> like, I don't understand what's going on. And it was I just was weirded out, but yeah. not like in a bad way. It was just weird. It was different. Yeah. yeah. And then we went to me and my girlfriend went to a um, Caleb. I yeah, think is yeah, another Christian yeah. church, mm -hmm. and that one I really really liked, and it was probably mostly because a lot of people were my age. Okay. And um, we I started going there quite a bit, and then I met my husband, uh -huh. and he's at the time wasn't Christian. I don't feel like he would have called himself Christian. Yeah. And we uh, kind of I feel like found Jesus together. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. And now you go to South Mountain? Yeah, we community. go to South Mountain Community in the Draper campus. Yeah. What did you think the first time you went, or even since uh, the music and the, the songs, and usually the words are up on the... Yeah, on the screen. you notice a difference there? And a lot, because there's... Um, it's all about Jesus. Isn't that amazing? It's literally... He took what we deserved and gave us what He deserves. And it just... There's a lot of grace which yeah. i didn't understand before and i don't have to do anything he loves me yeah and the only reason why i do anything is for him isn't that it was a, weird to wrap my head such around such a different message isn't it? <laughs> and not do not to have to do all the stuff yeah. That's, yeah their main belief there is not what you can do for them but what they can do for you which was really what centered the most for me and my husband yeah and to do it together, mm. that's neat that he's, and now you have a child? We do, we have one little miracle, she's a year, and now we're expecting another one. Are you really? Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. That's neat. Well, I, I just think it's so miraculous that, um, that you would, at, even at a young age, have these questions. I, I think of my own life where I just kind of went so many, many, many years just taking really? it in and I guess shoving off, putting on the shelf, as they say, anything that was a question. But I'm proud of you. To, well, <laughs> to, I'm angry that I wasted 20 years. Oh. I don't know how you and Dad feel. Wasting 40 or 40, 50 yeah. or 60 or something. Yikes. Yeah. 
I can't even imagine. Uh, well, your prayers are different. Do you have a different kind of aspect when you Definitely. Talk, to the, talk to God? It's not, I feel like, and someone tried to argue with me about this the other day, that it, they're very scripted as Mormon. You have to say, our dear Heavenly Father, you have to say what you're thankful for, and then ask for blessings. Yeah. And then you have to end it with, in Jesus' name, amen. Right. And as a Christian, I can literally just have a conversation and be like, oh, God, I'm, I'm struggling today. Help me love him the way you do because I don't know how to do it today. Isn't that neat? The end. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to close my eyes. I don't have to bow my head. I don't have to kneel on my knees. Nothing. Yeah. Well, it, that, that is joyful. I, I enjoy that part of it, too, and <laughs> talking, too. talking to God. Well, gosh, there's uh, a couple, so many other little questions I have, but you, the polygamy was such a big thing for you. It was. You, you had never known that uh, about Joseph Smith and the young. I didn't. And the temple. Those are really two big things. It seems <laughs> no. like polygamy and temple that, yep. that really affect people. Um, I and know. I've heard that. Had you known much about the, like the history of the Book of Mormon or... Book of Abraham and some of these other what we call I call bad news or Honestly, negative things. Honestly, no. Yeah. I mean, I really feel like once I decided to get actually married, that it was a real thing. It wasn't just a fantasy anymore. Yeah. Um, they gave you a temple prep class, which was nothing about the temple. It was just about families are forever. Yeah, because they can't talk about what's exactly. going on in the temple. Yep. So they, even though it's a temp prep, temple prep, what do you remember from <laughs> no, that? Did. What did they it do? was literally just about eternity. So this is, you're going to make covenants with God and you're going to have to keep them forever for the rest of your life. Yeah. And you're going to want to. And that was it. Well, again, without putting words in your mouth, but I almost sense, and it sounds like you do too, there was a difference between the Mormon church and what went on in the temple. Yes. Yeah, I mean, they, they That's don't... That's why I left. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> it was so dramatically different that I couldn't, couldn't wrap my head around Jesus, God, I guess it wasn't Jesus then, but God yeah. at the time expected me to know, that was another question I had, because um, when you first go through, the little old lady stands behind your shoulder and tells Whispers you what to tell what the, to, to the person behind the veil. <laughs> and I asked, I was like, what happens if I don't remember when I die? Oh, isn't that? <laughs> and that's why I tried to memorize that so <laughs> yeah. that I wouldn't be left out in the cold. <laughs> exactly. You know, not, never get the hand. That couldn't, I couldn't accept that. I was like, yeah. no way. And then I guess I'm a selfish person because I didn't want to share my husband. You mean for eternity? What if this other lady, I don't like her? What if I like don't get along with her? And you live in your own little world, right? Because yeah. you make your own world, you're God and goddesses, and I don't like her? That's funny. What do you do? You, you kind of, it's such a practical aspect of what you're talking <laughs> about and what happens in heaven and, and the, all these wives and yeah. husbands. And, and the other thing that kind of is funny, we're sealed as families, supposedly forever, but then everybody goes their own way. And right, you God's have their own, their own world. Family. Yeah, yeah, that never made sense either. Now, the garments, uh, and I, I just, I know, I know, I knew this, but did you realize that they were Masonic symbols that no. were on your garments? Mm -mm. I was, the only understanding I had from the garments was you wore them so that God would protect you. Yeah. So if you got in any kind of an accident. And, and there was flames. You would be protected by your where your, all your vital organs are. Yeah, and yet people die and burn up. And exactly. Everything. Well, let's talk about Jesus a little bit more because we've got just a minute left. Okay. But uh, I just I'm just so amazed at now of who I believe He is, or I know He is, and what He did for me that I couldn't do for myself. And as a Mormon, I just and I guess that's grace, but uh, versus works, but. You've, you've come to understand that now? I mean, understand's a strong word. <laughs> we still kind Appreciate of Appreciate it find, at least. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay. We still, I feel like I'm still on a journey to finding Jesus. Cause oh, I, sure. I don't feel like you're supposed to, well, I don't know if you're supposed to, I don't know. I feel like I question things still. Oh, that's a and, neat thing though, can't you? <laughs> you can question without being judged. Right, right? yeah. That is nice, because in my everybody... Bible study class, yeah. there's um, six of us married couples together, yeah. and I'll be like, 
hold on a minute, what? Yeah. And they'll just politely say, yeah, this is well, and This is what it. I think, and this exactly. is what it looks like it means. It doesn't, you know, help that one of the guys, the gentleman that leads its pastors, the dad's, is the pastor. No. So he's really good at, like, breaking Helping it thing. down yeah. real good. And, yeah. oh, I really didn't understand why a man and a woman were designed to get married. Like, yeah. As a Mormon, you just followed it. That was it. Well, I just think it's so interesting. If you're in that same group of a bunch of Mormons and they started bringing up questionable things, you'd no, be... you were be chastised. Sure. Yeah, you, you just oh, wouldn't yeah. be... You can't raise up any questions no. that are... And here in Christianity, it's Christianity is tough. I'll have to say I've had to make... I had to do my own thinking a little bit, which right. I never had to do no. as a Mormon. Sure didn't. I just things just kind of came, and and if I didn't understand it, I just okay, it'll, I'll figure it out in the millennium. Exactly. Or something. God will have me go through something, and it'll help me understand. Yeah, it. but I just figured I was headed to the celestial kingdom, and yeah, yeah. you went on a mission. Well, sure, I got married in the temple, and you perfect. Was a good boy. Good job. Well, we've got just a little bit of time left. Do you anything you'd like to say to your family or? Grands. How, how's your family, mostly your brothers and sisters, are they still active in the church? Just my one sister Okay. Um, is extremely, to the point that we don't have a relationship. You can't really talk to her about stuff? Or? At all. Oh dear. Not at all. Oh. She's very, still very brainwashed and it's sad to see. And The thing that was kind of like disheartening, nobody ever asked me what was going on. Like, why, why aren't you going to church? Why do you have ink on your body? Why, why did you leave your husband? Like, they didn't want to know or no. they loved you, but they, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know maybe, my mom did, but she still goes to church and never once asked me why I stopped going as a Mormon. And you really haven't been able to share mm -mm. stuff with her? You I ever actually invite her to church or anything? Heavens, no. Oh. I like a phrase that my dad told me. That you, and I know he heard it from someone, you don't have to witness to the people that are closest to you. God doesn't expect you to oh, really? witness. I don't know if that's true or not, but I liked I it. I don't know either. <laughs> but you set a good example. Yeah, we go to... And like you go, say, people that knew you before know you now. Yeah. You're, you're freer, you have freedom. And yeah. I'm sure there's a, a sense of... Just more, freedom. way more relaxed. Yeah. yeah. There's, it was really uptight and... And if you even looked funny, like if you if you had any yeah, tattoos yeah. Oh, or yeah, you'd be. anything like that, I wouldn't have even talk to looked at me, let alone be in the same room as I yeah, no. Well Kenzie, you're a delightful young lady and congratulations on the second little one. Thank I hope you. things go well. I'm sure grandpa's proud and but I appreciate your story and I, I hope people will pay attention and kinda of listen and think a little bit. That's what we did. You know more about Mormonism now than you ever did before. <laughs> Isn't that, Isn't that weird? Amazing? <laughs> Strange. <laughs> Five years of not being Mormon and yeah, and now 20. Now you know more. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files. Mm -hmm.